Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial. In the first part you have learned how to integrate your MetaHuman and several cloth assets to the Mutable plugin. And also how to use a clip mesh to get rid of the clipping. If the region you want to block is reachable with simple cubes or even proxy meshes. But when it comes to more complex cloth assets, like an open jacket with a shirt underneath, the Mutable plugin is not a good option to use. That's because Mutable is not work at a vertex level. Even if you use a proper UV map, it clips the mesh's polygons completely. And if you need a straight edge, for example, it will look like this. Unusable in this case. So the solution is to mask out the clipping parts using a material mask inside the material instance. Open the skeletal mesh of the cloth asset you want to create a mask for. Click on Make Static Mesh, drag it to the viewport and reset its position. Now also drag the mesh where the shirt is clipping through to the viewport, so in this case the jacket. Create a new material and name it Shirt Mask for example. Then duplicate one of your cloth textures and name it Mask Texture. It doesn't matter which one, we just need a texture for our mask. Bring the texture to the just created material and connect it to the base color pin. Then drag the new material to the shirt. Create a plane and move it next to the shirt mesh. Drag the same material to the plane. Switch to the mesh paint mode. Select the plane, click texture and then paint. Set the strength to 1 and the fall off to 0. Choose black as the paint color and hit Fill. Now select the shirt mesh. You can paint everything you want to have visible in white. Everything else will be masked out. When finished, Open the original shirt material, change its blend mode to masked and drag the shirt mask texture in. Create another texture sample node and search for a plain white texture. Add a static switch and a static bool parameter and name it shirt mask on. Connect the parameter to the value pin the mask texture to the true pin and the white texture to the false pin of the switch. Then connect the switch to the opacity mask pin of the material. This allows us to turn the mask on and off inside the material instance. So if the jacket is on, use the mask. If the jacket is off, don't use it. Now create two instances of the material. In the first one set mask on to on. In the second instance turn it off. Because the mutable object cannot change material parameters, we need to create two variations of the shirt inside the mutable object. One with a mask and one without it. So first go to the mesh section of the shirt and assign one of the material instances we've just created. And name the child object something like shirt masked. Then create another mesh section and assign the other material instance to it. Followed by another add to mesh component and another child object. Name this one shirt no mask. Connect it to the group object, compile and save. Now we can build the logic inside our character blueprint to toggle the cloth asset on and off, including the correct mask. Open your character blueprint and switch to the event graph. First we need a couple of variables to define the state of our cloth assets. Create a shirt, jacket, jeans and shoes variable and set their type to integer. Ok, let's begin with an easy on-off toggle for the jacket. Right click and add a keyboard button node. Choose whatever key you like. Drag the pressed pin out and add a branch node. Drag the jacket variable to the graph and choose Get. 
drag its pin out and add an equal node. Connect the result to the condition pin of the branch. Bring the jacket variable into the graph two more times as set nodes. Connect the branch to the set nodes and if the jacket value is zero, the condition is true. Here set the jacket value to one. If the value is not zero, the condition is false. Then set the value back to zero. This is simply our on-off switch for the jacket. Now let's tell the mutable instance to toggle the jacket acid on or off. Drag the customizable skeletal component to the graph. Drag the pin out and search for Get Customizable Object Instance. Drag the pins of the two set nodes out and add a set bool parameter selected option node for each of them. Connect the target pins to the customizable instance. The bool parameter name must match the one in the mutable object, in this case jacket. So if the jacket value is 1, turn the bool value on. If the jacket value is 0, turn it off. Finally, we need to update the mutable object. Right click and search for Update Skeletal Mesh Async. Connect both bool parameter nodes to it and connect the customizable instance to the target pin. Compile and save. If you now hit play, you can toggle the jacket by pressing your defined button. OK. Now create the same logic for the shirt. Choose a different key and use the shirt variable. Unlike the jacket, our shirt has three states, not just on and off. Shirt with jacket, shirt without jacket and shirt off. And we also need to control two meshes inside the mutable object. So add six set bool parameter selected option nodes. Name three of them shirt masked and the other three shirt no mask. Exactly like in the mutable object. If the value of the shirt variable is zero, meaning the shirt is off, set both shirt parameters to off. If the value of the shirt variable is one, we need to check whether the jacket is on or off to pick the correct shirt variation. So add another branch node. Get the jacket variable, add an equal node, set it to one and connect it to the condition pin of the branch. If the jacket is on, we want shirt masked on and shirt no mask off. If the jacket is off, we want the opposite. Connect everything to the update node. Connect all six parameter target pins to the customizable object. Now, what happens if you toggle the jacket while you're already wearing the shirt? We need to switch the shirt mesh even when the jacket changes. So, after the jacket is set, add another branch using the shirt variable. The same logic as above. Duplicate the whole section and connect both branches to the set jacket nodes. If the shirt is off, the jacket doesn't matter. Connect both false pins to the update node. If the jacket is on and the shirt is on, connect the true pin to the shirt state where the mask is on. If the jacket is off and the shirt is on, connect the true pin to the shirt state where the mask is off. Compile and save. If everything is connected correctly, it should work exactly as expected. And that's it for today. But there will be a bonus episode very soon, where I will show you how to use this setup inside the sequencer, so you can use it for cinematics as well and switch your cloth assets directly in the timeline with just a keyframe. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and it was helpful. If you want more tutorials like this, just leave a comment. Cheers!